You already know what's going on. Let's get it right into it. Let's get right into it. Um, it's a Shotify podcast, episode ninety-six. Um, and let's just right hop, hop into it, or hop into it. Uh, shout out to everybody listening to Spotify, Apple, blah blah blah. Um, man. Um, Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant. Um, this is what I've been waiting for for five years. Um, in a situation where Kevin Durant needs to perform, you know, because you know the last five years, I mean, the decisions he's made with teams, yada yada yada. We know, we know. You know, the Wars, the Nets. He's been with teams that have been in situations where he has not had to, you know, play to a um a level that he has to perform at this is the this was the first game that he had to be like okay if i don't perform well uh the team's gonna lose and this was exactly what i wanted i like i'm a kd fan um but you know with him going to certain teams it just felt like it disrespected himself in a way I just like that was my whole thing like you know KD I just want KD to be the guy and like no certain that he um because okay we all know Kevin Durant has always been a top three player his whole you know career if he was with OKC with these teams where you know he was the main player there was no like um argument you know, because, like, now with the Nets, like, I would argue James Harden is very close to Kevin Durant um, when it comes to these uh, top five, top ten um, uh, games, top ten uh, rankings. Um, yes, James Harden did play last night, but it was – he was not 100%. Um, and with teams and, you know, he was he was 60%, I would say, maybe 70 but, you know, it was the time where, like, Kevin Durant had to perform, and I loved it. Um, yeah, I loved it. I loved it so much. Uh, I just can't believe, like, Stephen A. Stephen A. was, like, yesterday was going, like, or he was, like, oh, Kevin Durant's going to score 50 points. Boom, Kevin Durant scores 49. The man Kevin Durant scored 49 points, I think 17 rebounds, 10 assists. He led every stat category. He led in blocks. He led in steals, points, rebounds, assists. That is – I love that so much. Um, I love it. It's it's what I have been wanting this whole time. Um, and man, Giannis onto can make a free throw. Man, disappointing. Disappointing. I will say it was very disappointing. Um, This has been my problem with the Bucks, man. The last three years. This has been my problem with just that organization. They've not surround, they have not surrounded Giannis with a playmaking guard. Um, you know, I did say the, the other day, like, okay, if Chris Middleton and Drew Holiday can maybe like combine themselves and to be like that type of guy, but man, there is some very questionable shots by Middleton in the second half. He was performing well in the first half, but the second half, it's just, it's weird seeing Chris Middleton taking crucial shots um, in this series. It's very disappointing. Um, And this is my whole deal with Giannis. In order for Giannis to win a championship, to win a title, he needs a superstar guard I don't care how you get them trade everyone on your team trade everyone on your team because you cannot have Chris Middleton shooting your crucial shots towards the end of the game and you know a lot of people have been making great like points like like also like I see Giannis as a Shaq Giannis is the Shaq of this generation in the way of like, he really can't shoot threes. He really can't shoot free throws. 
I mean, he was lucky that yet the yesterday scoring, I think two threes. Um, I mean, it's with a Shaq type player, he can get you everything for the first 40 minutes of the game, the first 44 minutes of the game, that last four to five minutes is where you need that guard, where you need that playmaking guard. And that's the same thing And I hate to compare it to Kobe and Shaq, but I do see Giannis as a potential Shaq type of dude. If Giannis had, let's see, if Giannis had Bradley Bill, team would, the team would be so drastically different. Um, you just, it's so crazy how close they are, but not close at the same time. Um, it's, it's disappointing. I'm not going to say it, it's, uh, what is it? What am I trying to say? Um, cause the 40, the first 44 minutes, Giannis will get his buckets. I'm not denying Giannis is a great player in himself. He's a top 10, top five ish and eh, not top five, top 10 player. He needs a playmaking guard to, in order for him to be successful, um, to, in order to win these games, in order to win playoff games, um, it, it's, it, it is, it, you just need balance. And it's very disappointing. I mean, Giannis, I, I, to me, Giannis feels like he wants to be LeBron, but he needs to embrace being Shaq more. Uh, he's trying to tend more to being a guardy forward when he needs to be more like a center forward. Um, and there's nothing wrong with being a Shaq. Like, come on now. Shaq is the fourth best player ever, fourth and fifth best player ever. Like, just, he needs to just embrace the center position a lot more. That's my whole ordeal with him. Man, I... The first half, I said, I said it's going to be Bucks and six. They're going to win this game. They're going to win game six in Milwaukee for sure. Um, man, Mm-mm-mm. my prediction now, I think Milwaukee will win game six, but then Brooklyn will win game seven. I think I think Brooklyn really emphasized winning game five because they knew if Milwaukee won game five and then going back to Milwaukee for game six. That was going to be a problem. Um, yeah, definitely. Um, man, it's crazy. Um, wow, it was a very interesting situation. Um, yeah, just all around impressed. All around impressed. Kevin Durant proved that he was a top top three player last night. I mean, we all knew that, but I mean now. Kevin, that was a Kevin, that was a Kevin, Kevin Durant iconic game of like, okay, maybe he is better than LeBron. I will easily say that. I think Kevin Durant might be the best player in the league as of this moment. For sure. For a hundred thousand percent. Because LeBron has been struggling with injuries. LeBron has been struggling just being old, you know? So, yeah, so. I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. I wonder if James Harden will play in game six. I heard some something where they they might sit him a little bit more, um, knowing that not, it is an elimination game. It's tough, man. It's going to be tough. Very interesting three-series playoffs going on right now. Um, yeah, crazy. Um what else? Man, I'm just impressed. I, I'm really happy for Kevin Graham. Um, I saw that I saw that Chris Paul had a little COVID violation. I'm confused as to whether he actually got COVID or if he went or if he violated protocols for the NBA. I don't know what's going on. It's very, very, um, the wording they use is very, I just don't know what is the rules. Um, Can I just know like what Porzingis got uh, fined because he went to a strip club, but then like LeBron um, went to like a 
Drake party, but didn't get fined. I don't know what Chris Paul did. So I don't know what the like standard is. Um, I know the LeBron Porzingis difference was a big difference because I think LeBron had um, like a, it was like more of a meeting party. It wasn't like a party party, like now like a strip club. But yeah, I don't know. I think, uh, yeah, I'm very curious to see what uh, Chris Paul got into. So we'll see what happens. Man, I just, well, he might be out for two weeks missing game one, maybe game two. They better hope the Jazz Clippers game goes seven games. Um, man, that was very – Chris Paul cannot catch a break in playoffs. Injury and then COVID, like, it's just – oh, man, I really want Chris Paul to win. I really want him to win. Speaking of Chris Paul, like, everybody's kind of, like, you know, ranking top five point guards of all time. And, you know, I've been really thinking about it. I've been really looking at rankings. I've been thinking about it, meditating on it. And and I can 100% say this. If Chris Paul wins the championship, I have no problem putting in him in my top five. 100%. He will be in the top five if he wins the championship. 100%. No ifs, ands, or buts. I mean, he might be a top five in some rankings here and there, you know, here and there but I think if Chris Paul wins you have to have him in your top five um man speaking of which like come, remember a couple months ago like everybody was on Russell Westbrook like being a top three point guard of all, of all time I was like y'all are on crack because no so Chris Paul being a top five I think because my t- when people ask me my top five point guards I always name four for sure and then after four, it gets that's the questionable spot. But I think Chris Paul will solidify the fifth spot at least minimum if he wins the championship, maybe even with the finals berth. Um, but because for sure, my top four, I mean, in order, maybe uh, Magic, Steph, um, Magic, Steph, John Stockton, and IT. People do put Oscar. Man, that is tough. I totally forgot about Oscar. I'm not going to (laughs) lie. I hate this. Because I I think John Stockton is great as well. Man, I'm not going to lie. I thought I was on to something. It, the point guards is just so tough. Um, hmm. But I don't know. I think Chris Paul will. Whoa, wait, wait, I'm stupid. Let me take all this back. I am correct with my 100% Chris Paul being a top five because I will put Chris Paul's championship over John Stockton's back to back finals appearances. I will happily do that. So I my like four solidified are uh, Magic, Steph, Oscar, and It, and then it'd be Chris Paul for sure, hundred um, percent. Because that fifth spot has always been questionable. I have always put John Stockton. That's always been my fifth guy, uh, point guard list. So with that being said. It's always been John Stockton, Jason Kidd, kind of, Steve Nash, kind of. Um, you know, Jason Kidd is interesting because he has a championship and has two finals appearances. But, you know, that championship may be – Jason Kidd was, like, the third best player on that team. So it counts, but not really. Um, Jason Kidd's legacy would be so different if he had won one of those um, finals, I think, oh. Three and oh two, those back to back. Um, totally, his legacy would be totally different. Um, but yeah, Steve Nash it always comes around. Um, right now, I would have, I 
think I would put Nash over CP3 right now. But I think if CP if CP3 wins or goes to the finals at least, I think that deserves him over Nash for sure. That will definitely clinch him a six spot in that top six point guards. Mm, man. Yeah, I would. I would. I think the finals berth would very I would very happily put him over Nash and Kid for sure. Cause man, this this playoffs is a career changer for Chris Paul. Um mixed with last year and then mixed with the Rockets stint. Like he has really proved himself the last five years and I'm very impressed. Um yeah, so so we'll see what happens. Um Shout out to Devin Booker, though. It hasn't been all Chris Paul. Like, Chris, this is the first time Chris Paul has a very superstar teammate. Um, yeah. I don't know why this reminds me, but it reminds me – this team reminds me of – this might be a stretch, but it reminds me of the 99 and 2000 Pacers when, you know, they had Reggie Miller, and then they acquired Mark Jackson. And to my extent, I think Mark Jackson really propelled them and took them to the next step uh, to go to the finals. I think in what, 2000? Um, and got, I think got them really close to 99, something like that. So yeah, it's a very interesting time. Because Devin Booker, man, he's been in the league for a while. Like his first six years, he is definitely a late bloomer. Man, I'm, I'm just happy for Dev, man. Just... And then Aiton has definitely taken a step up. Um, yeah, very intriguing. Speaking of Aiton, what am I going to say? And Trey Young, Luke, I'm about to get into Luca. My friend Blake Chancellor had a very interesting point that I was like, man, that, that's, that's, it's sad, but I mean, I don't know how I feel about it. You know, with the Suns, with the Hawks, and then you compare them with the Mavs. Okay. The Suns, they got Devin Booker and then they got DeAndre Ayton and then they threw in Chris Paul. Devin Booker was not good enough to lead a team to the playoffs. Devin Booker by himself could, could not really do much. So they were still bad. And then that's how they got DeAndre Ayton. And then that's how, the, you know, they got, what, Sarge? Is he still even on the team? Well, I'm not even going to talk about him. I'm just saying they were still lottery-esque. Um, and then you look at the Hawks. You have, you have Trey Young. He by himself, Trey Young by himself can almost get you in playoffs, but not quite. So they got Trey Young and they got John Collins. And then now they're getting these surrounding guys, Bogdanovich. Wait, I think one of those, one of those Boban, what a, you know what I'm talking about. They got uh, Clint Capella with the Mavs. With Luca being so good and elevating these teams to playoffs. We have not really had a lottery pick after Luca because Luca has just been so good. It's one of those like, okay, yes, it's bad, but it just shows how much Luca has helped. I mean, you could say the same thing with LeBron back in the day. LeBron was so good right away that they really didn't have any lottery picks to kind of help him along the way. Um, I mean, you know, with MJ, MJ got kind of lucky with getting Scottie Pippen because MJ by himself could not elevate a team to like a top four, top five. So Luka and LeBron are different in that scenarios. So... You know, with our bad luck, with Porzingis just being so bad, it would have been very nice for Luca to maybe get a, have a 2019 or 20, no, no, 
2019 or 2020 top 10 pick in there, you know, that'd have been kind of interesting. Kind of just because Luca needs a buddy. Luca needs a buddy. Trey Young has a buddy. Dev now has a buddy with, you know, eight and long term. Um, And then also Mavs have always been bad with free agent signings and kind of surrounding talent. I mean, saw that with Dirk. Um, so I thought that was a very interesting point. I thought that was – it basically said, okay, Mavs definitely need to sign free agents uh, for real. Um, I, we need a Jason Terry. We need, we need a Jason Terry, but we need a Jason Terry to be like a third-esque type of player, third option. Um, let's look at Jason. Let's look at now Jason Terry. <sighs> right. um, what else? What else? What else, man? But, okay, speaking of Luka, the whole Luka Mavs thing, what in the world – I was like, oh, no, it's going to be bad because I already know they're going to say Luka to the Lakers. And sure enough, yesterday on first take, of course, they're debating on whether Luka's going to go to the Lakers. I'm like, guys, can we, like, slow down for a second? I mean, it all reminds me of LeBron, like, easily. Um, it's LeBron, but worse because, I mean, at maybe LeBron's fifth or sixth year, they were, like, you know, debating is he going to go to the Knicks or whatever, but – this is a third year, Luca. I mean, I can see it. I mean, one thing I do love about Luca is that I think I think Luca would leave if the Mavs do not surround him with help. And that's what I hated about Dirk was because the Mavs were not helping Dirk much, and I wanted Dirk to leave. I was so pro trade Dirk, especially like in the 2013 era, because. We're wasting Dirk. We were wasting, we wasted Dirk's uh, post championship career. I was so like, because I was like, okay, we're not going to like help him. So we should trade him because, you know, very mutual. Let Dirk have more opportunities with a winning team or sign better players, not Monta Ellis. So, yeah, that, that was my whole thing with the – I think – I remember being, like, the only one um, getting hate for that opinion. But I was like, if we're not going to help him, what are we doing? This man's a Hall of Fame player, and we are disrespecting Dirk. I will never, like, get over that. But um, all that to say, the Maps have not had a great um, life – with signing free agents, and I fear that Luca. I think Luca would leave for sure, and I like that. I like putting pressure on the Mavs front office. I like that. I'm like, all right, if you don't help me, I'm gonna find help myself, and I love that. I love it. I love it. Yeah, that's fun. So we'll see. I mean, I don't know what the Mavs can do, man. I don't know. Um, also the Kawhi injury with Kawhi Leonard being out of game five today versus the Jazz. Man, kind of sad. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. Kind of sad because I think, I thought we were on the verge of another 20, like another Kawhi playoff run. Like the 2019 one, which was so magical. Very disappointed. I'm very disappointed. I'm not going to lie. On God. But. And they're saying he might be out for the whole series. I don't remember asking. I remember they asked Kawhi like the game four, the last game. Like, oh, how's your uh, foot or whatever it is, hamstring. And, um. And Kawhi was like, oh, that's all good. No problem. I was like, okay, cool. Let's move on. And then game five, oh, it was, it was a problem. I guess so. But, man, very disappointed. I mean, I kind of hope – I can't believe I'm saying this, but I kind of hope Paul George steps up. 
Because I do not want... I don't want Utah, man. I don't want the Jazz. They're okay, but it's, it's the Jazz. <laughs> I don't know, man. Um, that's a very... It's a, that's a tough blow for the, for the Clippers. I think the Jazz are going to win this game tonight. Game five. And I think maybe Kawhi could maybe come back for game six and like kind of limp around and shoot and then win game seven. I kind of hope, I hope, but I don't know, man. Donovan Mitchell is a bad dude. Donovan Mitchell is that guy. So, um, yeah, we'll see. We will see. Um, What else? Uh, what else? Last second, last second. Um, oh, no, no, no. Oh, I saw this one article the other day. This is very random, music-wise now. Um, about Rick Ross, that the rapper Rick Ross, for anybody not knowing what uh, music is, but what what's our quote? He says he never flies like first class, and like he flies Delta, and apparently he cuts his own grass because he found out from somebody else that this one guy was spending a million dollars um, for having a lawn mowing company mow his grass, which. Now that I'm saying it, that's very skeptical. A million dollars? How much grass do you have? That you need a million? That's a lot of, I mean, I would not put it back, back or I would not put it past Rick Ross for having that much land. Um, that was a very concerning amount of land. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. But, yeah, I, um, that, I thought that was, like, just so, that's so smart. I mean, I like it. I, like it. I always kind of think to myself, like, okay, you know, when I'm on planes, I'm sitting in my little coach or whatever, not coach, economy seat, and I'm like, okay, if I had a million dollars or, like, you know, was that type of dude, would I still get first class? And I was like, I don't think so. I don't think I would get first class. And I, I had that relation the other day. I was like, I would do that. I would I would just still get economy. Because here's my thing. Okay, you get first class, but I think what is it's like double the price of a normal ticket. I or maybe 50% up. It's such a like temporary thing, experience. And what you get you get drinks. Okay, cool. You're by yourself though. And and I also had this thought the other day. I, Cause I would rather spend that what fifty to a hundred dollars extra on something else at the place I was at. I would rather spend that on a food with friends. I'd rather spend that with alcohol with friends. I think alcohol gets such a bad rap. Of course, of course, I understand. I'm not trying to go on that side of this argument. I'm trying to bring it back to this side. With alcohol, of course, you're going to be with friends drinking it because I, I don't drink by myself Ugh. but to be with friends that's more of an enjoyable moment so i've always thought um because people call me frugal for that opinion i'm like no i'm still gonna want to spend the money or okay people don't actually call me that but i'm just saying like i think that would i think people would call me frugal for that opinion or maybe they're like oh maybe you're smart i don't get it i don't care but i'm just saying like I've always had that, like, I've always would, I would spend bukus of money when I'm in a social setting. When I'm by myself, I don't want to spend money on myself for an experience by myself. You know, I, I just, I don't know, I just uh, think of it very different. I'd rather spend on food and drinks with people. Yeah, that's all. So I don't know about the Rick Ross article now. I mean, I think everybody says that, but maybe, I mean, I bet Rick Ross does first class in there. He probably, he doesn't, I don't think, I don't think he even has a private jet. 
and interesting. Um, all right, man, let's wrap this up. Let's wrap this up. Um, okay, song of the week shout out. Uh, song of the week. Um, what was the song I saved? Still Cooking by Larry June. Larry June's a Larry June. I don't know how to describe his rap because he's not really a good rapper. I, that's a very weird statement to say, but I still listen to him. How do I describe this? Larry June is like if audiobooks and music became a thing together. Because he does not really have a good rapping voice, but he says a lot of good message, uh, positive affirmations. Like it's still music, of course, but it's like, he's like, oh, eating healthy, uh, at the beach, spending money. <laughs> like it's, it's like if Jay-Z wasn't really good at music, but still tried to make music. That's all I'm gonna say about it. I don't. You just gotta go listen to it. It's a very weird thing that I know I'm saying. It's very interesting. Uh, it has that. It does have a West Coast uh, type of rap. Uh, kind of reminds me of Dom Kennedy. Uh, to all my millennials out there, but um, but yeah, it's. I like it. I like it, man. I like it. I like his little. Cause he has a little aesthetic to him too, with the orange juice or oranges. It's interesting, but um. Yeah, that's it. Uh, shout out, and also shout out to DBU Baseball. Um, man, heartbreaking. DBU Baseball was like two innings away from the co- like the main College World Series. Um, they got heartbroken because what well, they were down a, they were up one run with two outs in the seventh inning, and then they gave up a grand slam. That's heartbreaking. Um, but I think that's just karma for not karma, but like it. Got, got balanced out because I think the, the previous regional DBU had a situation almost just like that. So, man, you got to come and come and goes, man. Come and goes. Um, but, yeah. yeah. That's it. Uh, yeah, thank you for watching. Um, I think we're up to – yeah, wait. I think we're about to approach 200 hours of – listening time watch time on youtube that's kind of cool all right whatever um thank you for watching peace shout outs to everybody try right